Yo, what's up, folks? How y'all doing on this big, happy, rainy Saturday? It's your boy, Mike D, a.k.a. DDE80, a.k.a. 13 Wonder of the World. And thank you again for joining me on the Point of View on this Saturday. Big Saturday night going on in the wrestling world. As we know that the Royal Rumbles tonight will be competing with AEW Collision, which I probably will attend, will attend, AEW Collision tonight in Shreveport, Louisiana. Shout out to the Point Place family. Shout out to Bobby Reezy. Shout out to M Breezy. Shout out to Naya Naya. Shout out to my sister. I love all y'all. And thank y'all for joining me on the Point of View on this Saturday. Like I was saying before, a lot of great things going on in the wrestling business tonight, as well as the Royal Rumble. I'll give you my thoughts on the Royal Rumble, as well as the AEW Collision in Shreveport, Bossier City. At the Brookshaw's Grocery Store Arena, used to be the CP Tell, but tonight AEW is in Louisiana. They were in, they're going to be in New Orleans this Wednesday for Dynamite. So I guess they're going to stay and overlap until Wednesday when they get to New Orleans. But I'm glad tonight that they're in Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana. Shout out to Tony Schiavone for giving us love. I always talk about the Shreveport, Louisiana area as well. Shout out to all of the AEW guys that are going to be there tonight. The big main event is the steel cage match between FTR with Danny Garcia against the House of Black, Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews, and Big Brody King. It's going to be interesting as well. Orange Cassidy is going to be in the building defending his title as well tonight. Uh, Kingston, Eddie Kingston, and Brian Danielson. It's going to be good to see Brian Danielson in the Bossier City area. He, he hasn't been around here for a while. You know, dude used to do a lot of live events around here. Brian Danielson was on the card a lot. But it's good to see him back. We're going to get to see him again tonight. There's a lot of guys that are going to be there that I'm glad to see. I wish I could see Sting. I wish I could see Edge. But... You know, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you just miss them. Maybe they'll come back around again. And it would have been great to see Sting in his final times here in the Dirty. And down here, especially down here in the boot, what we call Ratchet City, which is Shreveport, Bolger City. But anyway, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about the WWE Raw Rumble. Um... Looks like it's going to be a stack card. I don't know whose surprise is going to be coming out. Maybe, I know Jay Cargill will probably be one of the girls that will be debuting tonight. I, there's a possibility that Trinity might be coming back tonight. I don't know yet. Uh, on the men's side, I don't know if The Rock is going to be in the in the Royal Room. I don't know if Hogan's going to be in it. There's just a lot of talk. Um I do know this. I know that since Logan Paul did win, I mean, excuse me, did get a uh, contract extension with WWE, I think he will. He probably will still be the United States champion after tonight. I don't think KO's going to beat him. It'll be a shock if he does. I wish he would. And I think you go with L.A. Knight versus Logan Paul for the, U for the U.S. title at WrestleMania. Or you can make L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles versus Logan Paul at WrestleMania. That's just me. That's just my opinion on it. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen. I wish it would because L.A. Knight does need, does need his moment. And if he can't be the world champion, then this moment right here of him winning a United States title at WrestleMania would fit the bill. There's no way tonight that Roman Reigns is losing tonight, folks. Roman Reigns will be going into WrestleMania as the universal undisputed heavyweight champion. He's not going to lose the match at the Royal Rumble. He's not. And he's not going to be a part of the Elimination Chamber, which I thought that he should be because I thought you should have the match between Cody and him at the Elimination Chamber or have him and Rock fight at the Elimination Chamber. But as you know, The Rock is now one of the bosses of WWE TKO. And so now you have to think about this here. He, do he want to do that big match? Because Australia is going to be great. It's going to be big for what they do. But I don't know, folks. It's a lot of un 
solve questions going on. And the world, the wrestling world, WWE especially, has been turned upside down since the allegations with Vince McMahon. And a lot of people have talked about it. I had a little input on it. I was listening to Con Man 167 last night, and he didn't want to have too much to say about it. So this is what I'm going to say about it. If he's guilty, then he got he to pay, the, pay the price. It's just the bottom line of it. And I said this, and I do mean this. I said he's going to try to, he's going to have money and lawyers, and they're going to try to get him up out of it. I, I, that's all I can say about it. I'm not trying to be, you know, male chauvinist about it. That's not my opinion, but I'm just telling you actual facts about these type of situations. Not only that. They said Brock Lesnar had a, uh, had a, a fit in it, a, a, a part in it. Brock Lesnar had a part had a part in it. Excuse me. Then, as good as he is and a monster he is, he needs to pay for what he did if he did something. Because remember, during the plane ride from hell, the documentary Brock Lesnar was also being disruptive and being, you know, un. On well, he was being a jerk to Terry Reynolds, if I'm not mistaken, or somebody. If I if I remember the the episode on Vice, and shout out to Vice because Vice are gonna have some more dark sides of the ring. They had one on Kurt Angle, but I think they pulled it, and so they're not gonna talk about Angle on the dark side of the ring. So we'll have to see what that's about. We'll have to get ready to enjoy those. Those usually come out during the time of WrestleMania as well as the um, the treasures and as well as the, the other stories that also comes out as well. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, who knows who might come out tonight? Um, those are the only two... Only two matches I think that they're having, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's only the United States title match and the, oh, yeah, because Seth Rollins doesn't have a match at the Royal Rumble. So I don't know if this Royal Rumble, this Royal Rumble, I know for sure that it's going to be two hours long because they have two Royal Rumble matches between the men and the women. Are they going to add other matches to this? I think you go with Bobby Lashley uh, and his and the Street Profits against Killer Cross, Karrion Cross, excuse me, and the ALP, the final test. I think you go with that match as well tonight. So we'll see what happens with that as well. But ladies and gentlemen, yeah, tonight's going to be jam-packed with wrestling. Uh... If I was not going to go see AEW, I would be watching the Raw Rumble. Um, and I would be trying to figure in what's going on with the Raw Rumble. But this is going to be interesting tonight. Tonight's going to tell as the road to WrestleMania starts again. Let me say this also while I'm at it. The Women's Raw Rumble. First of all, I want to say congratulations to the Kabuki Warriors. Oscar and Carly Sane. Carly Sane has been back for like, what, two or three months? And she finally gets a, another championship match. Now, a lot of people said this. A lot of people said that Carter and Chance were just placeholders for those titles. And the question, the answer to that question is yes, they were. Because they had to, and let me let me let me tell you what my theory is about this. They took the belts off of Piper and Chelsea because they did not want the Kabuki Warriors to go up against them. Because they knew that if they put them up against them, then that was going to be too easy for them to beat them. So they had to put the belts on Carter and Chance, which didn't have the championship that long. I don't think they had it, but like three or four, three weeks or something like that, two or three weeks. They only had like, what, two title defense or something like that. It was crazy, but it happened that way. And you go with what, and according to the, to the, to the, the, 
the plans of what WWE has, you go with who's the hottest thing. Damage control or hot on SmackDown. Just like Judgment Day is hot on Raw. Now, let me say this also. And this is a true, a true saying on what I want to say. Now, it's up to Bailey to win the Royal Rumble. If Damage Control wins this Royal Rumble, which who who's in it? Bailey. If Bailey wins this Royal Rumble, who I think could possibly win this, she is not going to go up against Rhea Ripley, folks. That's not happening. You're going to start seeing the pieces crumble in damage control. Would I say that? I'll tell you. They're going to be fighting against each other. You're going to see Bailey go up against Eo Sky for the title at WrestleMania. Even, I think, even if Bailey does not win the Royal Rumble, that story is happening. Damage control will be fraction before WrestleMania. And that's just me being 100% bluntly honest about it because I'm telling you, you can see the proof in the pudding with this, folks. It's going to be damage control against damage control at WrestleMania. They've had, what, a, a two-year run with this? Ever since, what, Survivor SummerSlam, excuse me, of 2021, they've had a two-year run with this. Because at first it was Dakota and Io. They ended up winning. They've won. And if you go with damage control, they have won the tag team titles on, what, three different occasions? Something like that. In that circle that they have, counting Oscar now and, and Carly Sane, who's a part, the Kabuki Warriors, who are a part of Damage Control, that's absolutely right. They've had three runs. Damage Control has had three runs in that with the women's tag team titles. So, you know, now it's, it, it's, it's up to what is going to happen with Bayley and EO and all these people, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you what I know for a fact. This is going to crumble if Bailey wins the Royal Rumble. And even if Bailey does not win the Royal Rumble, there's going to be a problem between her and EO Sky and all the rest of them. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Just keep, keep going on. Keep watching. With the women's... De I, I, my decision and my picks... I have three picks. Do I think Jay Cargill, if she does show up, wins? No. She's not ready. She's, she's still green. She's not going to win. Becky Lynch is a favorite to win this Raw Rumble. But do I think Becky could win? I think you do go with Becky versus Rhea at WrestleMania, even if Rhea, excuse me, even if Becky does not win the Raw Rumble. You still go with Rhea versus Becky or Rhea Nia, Nia, excuse me. Let me say that again. Nia, Rhea, and Becky could have a match at Mania. Nia Jax could win the Raw Rumble despite, you know, I don't think she will. Listen at that truck ramming. But I also say this too. It's going to be simple after tonight where the where the cards flow for wrestlemania it flow it's going to flow because whoever rhea ripley fights i don't think you take the title off of her i don't think i think you gear her up like roman reigns you keep her as the champion you keep her winning until you know you ride the wheels off of it because right now, Rhea Ripley is the hottest thing going on in the women's division. She is better than, 10 times better than EO Sky, even though EO Sky ha has had a tremendous run 
as the champion of SmackDown. But I'm here to tell you, this is why I said what I said. Women need another title, a mid-card title. If I'm Triple H, if I'm, if I'm Rock, I'm Shawn Michaels, I'm Nick Khan, I'm saying, hey, we need to make a women's mid-card title. Just because the women tag team are out there, you can still put time in the show for them to have a mid-card title. Lia Valkyrie, as good as she is, she probably will be here tonight at the Rumble as well as a, entrance, as a surprise entrance. She has done, done a phenomenal job as the NXT Women's Champion, but she's not on Rhea Ripley's level. Even though Rhea Ripley was kind of like a mentor to her when Rhea was going back to NXT. This is interesting, folks. This is interesting. Jim Uso, now he has admirations to try to win the Raw Rumble so he could have a shot at, at a title to challenge Seth Rollins. These are my three picks on both Royal Rumbles between the men and the women. On the men's, it's CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, and Gunther with Drew McIntyre, a, a late four. On the Raw, on the, the, that's the Raw side as well. I don't think anybody from SmackDown is going to win the Royal Rumble unless Cody Rhodes wins and he ends up challenging Roman Reigns, which everybody knows that's what he's going to do because he's not going to challenge Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. He's going to want to go back in the ring and go against him. Gunther has a chance because Gunther has a chance to make history and they can pull a Hogan warrior type match at Mania where the Intercontinental Champion becomes the world champion. And that's Gunther's al up Gunther's alley if he stays the Intercontinental Champion until WrestleMania. But I don't know because if you want to take the Intercontinental title off of him, you've got to go with Jey Uso. And, and, and I'm telling you right now what's going on. They're, they're, they're trying not to put Jey Uso in that mix. But Jey Uso needs that moment. Jey Uso could become the Intercontinental Champion sooner than we think. Also, ladies and gentlemen, on the women's side, I said it's either going to be Bailey, Becky, or Nia. There's nobody else. I don't think there's nobody else. Bianca's a, a high four. I don't think Bianca is going to be in a match for the title. Not this year. I think you go with who you go with, and that is Becky or Nia. That's who I think you go with. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be right back. Uh, I have to take a break for a minute, I check on something, but I'll be right, right back with part two of The Point of View. Yo, yo, I'm back. Part two of Point of View, excuse me, I had to had something I had to take care of, um, a little emergency, I had to go outside and go take care of some business. But I'm back, ladies and gentlemen, with the point of view. Part two of the Royal Rumble for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like I was saying before, I don't know who all else is going to be wrestling. I think you go with Bobby Lashley, Street Profits versus the Final Testament, Karen Cross, AOP. I think that's going to be the next, the next, excuse me, the next uh, match that you do have if you want to have that match. Uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's going to be some interesting pieces going on in this Royal Rumble. There are going to be stories told in this Royal Rumble that has not been told. The question is, where's, the question is where Drew McIntyre is going to do if he doesn't win the Royal Rumble. Not only that, what else is going to happen? Uh, with, you know, Judgment Day because Finn Balor's not going to win. Damian Priest has a chance to win the Royal Rumble, but he's not going to win the Royal Rumble. They have to figure out when they're going to get him to cash the title in. I think when he does cash, he does not win the title. I think he loses. He held on to that briefcase for a long time and have not won. Uh, or 
CM Punk wins at, at WrestleMania or whoever beats Seth Rollins at WrestleMania and they come in and cash in, Damian Priest. That could be a scenario that happens, but who knows, man. Um, I will say this, though. Do I think somebody can repeat and win the Raw Rumble? I think so. But do I think? No, because the greatest repeater in, in the Raw Rumble history is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin went two out of three the three times he won the Royal Rumble, which means he lost one because he didn't even have a WrestleMania match. He had a WrestleMania match, but it wasn't for the title when he won back in 97 when he screwed Bret the hit Matt Hart. They ended up having that match, uh, and I think Bret Hart, it was Bret Hart and Austin in the submission match. They wanted that match more Vince McMahon booking. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> You know, some some of the some of this is, is suspect, but the outcome of that was Bret Hart became a heel, a heel, and Austin became a babyface because he didn't give up. And that's also when Kent Shamrock, who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, have an opportunity, uh, had a, had his opportunity in WWE as a performer. Uh, the second time he won was in '98. Of course, he won that Royal Rumble, and he beat Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. And he also won back in 2001, where he uh, beat The Rock the second time at WrestleMania for the WWE title. So Austin is the greatest. He's the greatest to ever do that. I don't know if you're going to, if you do have a repeater that wins, it has to be Rock. If you want Rock to win the Royal Rumble, let him win the Royal Rumble tonight. He'll be the sec. he'll be, this will be his second Royal Rumble that he's, he's won since 2000. That's the only repeater I see winning the Royal Rumble. Cody Rhodes could be the other repeater that wins. Drew McIntyre could be the other repeater that wins. But CM Punk has never won the Royal Rumble. And this could be his time to win the Royal Rumble, CM Punk, folks. Um, and with me saying that, I'm saying that because... I want people to understand how this goes with this Raw Rumble stuff. Uh, Triple H has won twice. Both times he's won. You know, he, he main evented WrestleMania. In 2016 when he won, he won the WWE title that night. So he ended up losing the title to Roman Reigns at that WrestleMania that, that, that year. But in 2002, when he won the Royal Rumble, he had just came back from a devastating quad injury, and he beat Chris Jericho to become the WWE Undisputed Champion. So Triple H has won twice at WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar has won twice at WrestleMania. He won back in 2003. When he won in 2003, he beat Kurt Angle to become the WWF Champion, WWE Champion. And when he won back in 2022, he beat, he did not beat Roman Reigns, but he was, he went in as the champion, but he did not beat Roman Reigns to become the undisputed champion, the undisputed world heavyweight champion. So he's won twice. Randy Orton has won twice. Randy Orton won the Royal Rumble back in 2009. He did not beat Triple H for the title. But when he won back in 2017, he did beat Bray Wyatt to become the WWE champion. So that's two. Edge won twice. He won back in 2010 where he lost to Chris Jericho at WrestleMania. But then he won in 2021 where he lost to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. So I'm just saying it. sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you think about the guys that's won twice. Shawn Michaels has won both times, and he became the champion both times he won because he won in 90, 96, and he won in 97. In 97, he, uh, he won the title at WrestleMania, if I'm not mistaken. I think he lost to Sid once. He beat Bret Hart at the WrestleMania in 96, but I think he lost... At the Russell, I don't, I can't remember because I think Sean, if I'm not mistaken, he did win one of the WrestleMania. I, I have to look that one back up. 
to make sure I, I, I don't want to be incorrect with what I'm saying about that. Shawn Michaels won twice. Hulk Hogan won twice, but he was already the champion when he won. So, you know, there's been some great Royal Rumble winners, guys, on the men's side. The women's, they're still trying to elevate. I know this, this, this is your sixth year doing it. Uh, they have not had a dual, a two-time women's Royal Rumble winner. That could change tonight because Becky Lynch looks like he, she, she could possibly win. Or it might be a first time for Bailey because Bailey has never won the Raw Rumble. Um, and you you think about the guys that's won that's won twice: Austin, uh, Edge, Triple H, uh, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, Edge. You know, those guys have won the Raw Rumble twice. John Cena has won the Raw Rumble twice. He won when he won in thirteen. He beat The Rock to become the champion. But back in 08, when he won, he won, he did not win the Royal Rumble that year because he lost to Randy Orton. And I'm saying this because, like I said before, it don't always work out that way with the Royal Rumble. You win the Royal Rumble. Yeah, you got a chance to wrestle to headline WrestleMania, but you don't know if you're going to win or not. The writing was on the wall last year for Rhea Ripley. Everybody knew that Rhea Ripley was going to win the Raw Rumble and win the world title from the SmackDown title from Charlotte Flair. That's exactly what happened. Charlotte Flair knew she had to do a job. And she's been doing jobs at WrestleMania for time and time. And the year that Ronda Rousey won. She didn't win the title at WrestleMania over Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair won that match. And I'm just telling you, this is, this is what happens. Bianca, when she won, yes. When Oscar won, no. She did not beat Charlotte Flair. In fact, Charlotte Flair was the first person to give her a, a losing, a L on her record in WWE, L on the main roster. And... Folks, I don't care what anybody says. Goldberg and Oscar are two of the most undefeated wrestlers in the business. Because Oscar ran through NXT like it was nothing. Goldberg ran through WCW like it was nothing. Kevin Nash was the first person to beat Goldberg one, two, three, pin him one, two, three. Charlotte Flair was the first person to beat Oscar in the ring by making her give up. Those two have a wall of their own, Oscar and Goldberg. And let me tell you this here. NXT is still not ready for Oscar. That's one of the greatest. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. One of the greatest women's wrestlers in the business, and that's Oscar. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care what anybody tells you. The greatest NXT women's wrestler in the business. She was better than Bianca. She's better than those four horse women. She were better than, she's better than Rhea Ripley. She was better than all of them. La Valkyrie right now has a chance, but None of them can can withhold a candle to to Oscar, no way. Oscar's just too too important in the business right now, you know. But I'm just talking about the Royal Rumble winners because it doesn't happen for all of them all the time when they win when they win the Royal Rumble. That means they have a shot at WrestleMania, but that doesn't mean they're gonna win the title. Batista, I forgot about him. Dave Batista also was a guy that won the Royal Rumble twice. In 2005, he beat Triple H to become the world champion when Evolution was exploding. But when he came back in 2014, he was in, a, in the main event of WrestleMania and Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton, well, Randy Orton didn't, but Daniel Bryan took his, his moment by beating him. Because at the time, it started becoming about Yeselmania. It wasn't about them anymore. So Daniel Bryan, you know, got the title at Mania on Batista's time. 
You know, and this is this is why I say what I say about the cards of mania, the cards of the Raw Rumble. Why is it important to get that WrestleMania match? Because that check is also big. Why do you think part timers are always coming back to be involved? It, 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 it's a sticky situation because here's what a lot of people say. You know, I grind hard all year. And when it comes down to my WrestleMania moment, I don't have it because of the part-timers. Well, these are the guys, and I, and I can respect that from a hard-working competitor that's been grinding the whole year round. that's always on the show. And you got a guy that sits home for like five or six months and comes in, and they have a high price match. Well, that's because the high price on them is they paid the way for you to have your opportunity. They don't look at it like that. They look at it as like they're stealing their money, which in one way they are, but they're also giving back. You gotta understand, your blood and sweat and tears come from this. That's why John Cena can come back in. He can leave for like seven, eight months and come back in and everything's good with him. I don't care what anybody says. I know that the business Enjoyed John Cena last year when he came in and worked those two months in wrestling. John Cena was there for two months on SmackDown and having fun doing it. Because at the time, you no, know, the movies were on strike. The, 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 the production and the halts on the movies were on strike. So that's why Rock and Cena was coming in. A lot of people didn't want Rock back, but they want him now because he's in charge of WWE along with Triple H and Nick Khan. And uh, the bald head guy from USC, Dana, Dana White, excuse me. No disrespect to him, but that's the way I see him because he, he, he has no hair on his head like me. <laughs> but he's a good guy. You know, he might be rough and tough with the UFC, but he tries to provide entertainment for the people. And when you try to provide entertainment for the t for the people, that's all that matters, you know. You might be a butthole off camera, which I don't never want to be that type of guy, but that's what it is. And uh, so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just talking about the Royal Rumble and what could possibly happen tonight. It is, and this is one thing about it, it is the start of a beginning for you if you let it happen. Now, if L.A. Knight was in the Royal Rumble, he would have been a competitor to win this thing. If you guys remember about two months ago, L.A., before CM Punk and Orton came back, L.A. Knight on SmackDown was the hottest competitor that SmackDown had besides Roman Reigns. AJ Styles was injured, but L.A. Knight was putting butts in seats because he was in the main event. He was doing what he could do to make things happen, and he was keeping the people and the folks intrigued into SmackDown because they knew what he was going to do. The moment Randy Orton came back to WWE, that changed. When he said he was going to SmackDown, it changed. When Randy Orton came back, CM Punk came back that same night. When CM Punk came back, it changed. And it hurt Cody because Cody had a situation to where he was going to be the forerunner. The, the book stops with Cody. With CM Punk and Cody, I'm telling you guys this because this is why I say what I say about this, and I'm telling you. Cody Rhodes has been the golden guy in WWE for the last two years. Cody Rhodes does not lose matches like talking about it. He's lost matches. You can count on the fingers how many matches Cody, Cody Rhodes has lost. And I can tell you, the match he had with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, was his first loss. 
because Cody had not lost any other matches until last year's WrestleMania when he lost to Roman Reigns. When he lost that match to Brock Lesnar, where he didn't get pinned, I think he gave up or something, passed out or whatever. That was his second loss. You know where his third loss came? And I'll give you, the, I'll give you credit about this. He lost... When he lost the tag team titles to the Judgment Day, him and Jey Uso, that was it. Cody doesn't lose too many matches. Solo Socolo used to be like that. Because I remember when Solo was here in Shreveport, he was unstoppable when he beat Sheamus. That dude loses every chance he gets. Now, he's, he's no longer the invincible Solo. He gets beat. But with that being said, Cody is the guy here in WWE. He, he's the guy. Cody Rhodes is, is, is the golden guy. Not Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is the is the is the the carrier of SmackDown. Because he's the undisputed champion. But as far as WWE all around. In the men's division, it's Cody Rhodes. It's not Seth Rollins. It's Cody Rhodes. You know, and and I and I and I hope that he could tell his story at Mania by beating Roman Reigns. But I don't think Cody's going to beat him. Surprise me if he does, because they want Roman Reigns to break Hulk Hogan's record of being the champion, and that could happen. But if I'm WWE, do I let it happen? The answer to, to that is, I don't know. And if he, 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 he be champion, if he be champion, excuse me, until SummerSlam, wow, what a, what a, what a, a run that would be for Roman Reigns. And that's just, you know, what I think about that as well, because there's nobody else that can touch the barrel that Roman Reigns has put in the, in the ignition. You know, he, he's there. Randy Orton doesn't need to be champion again, but I would love to see him become the 15-time world champion because I want to see if he could be the one that could possibly break the Nature Boy's Ric Flair's record. There's, there's two guys. Triple H is not going to do it because he's retired. But there's two guys in the business that can break the nature boy as males, not female, because Charlotte Flair could do it. But as male, male competitors, and I can name you two of them right now. That's Randy Orton and that's John Cena. John Cena has tied with Ric Flair. But can John Cena break Ric Flair's record? He could possibly break that record if he comes back and he wins the title for one night and loses the next night. And I think WWE could do that. The value of what? This is the value to make him the greatest ever. If John Cena breaks the record of Ric Flair, he's the greatest wrestler ever. But until then, Ric Flair will always be the greatest record wrestler of all time in my book. There's nobody that was polished in the ring like the nature boy, Ric Flair. Flair was one of the greatest wrestlers I ever watched on TV because he would do the shenanigans, he would do the woo, jump on the top rope, get slammed down. He would always go for the back body trap, run over the turnbuckles, upside down, sideways. Flair was the man. And Flair is still doing his thing in AEW, hanging out with the Stinger. But I'm here to tell you folks, this is my thoughts. This is why I say what I say about this. And, I, and I'll say this with nothing but respect. If John Cena becomes the 17 time world champion, then he's the greatest ever. Charlotte Flair is the greatest women's champion of all time. No disrespect to Trish Stratus, 
because I know Trish, Trish Stratus and Mickey James, like seven and six time world champions, Becky Lynch, I think she's like a six time world champion or something like that in her own. I think NXT made her seven, if I'm not mistaken, something like that with Becky. But man, I'm telling you, Charlotte Flair is the greatest women's champion of all time. And that's just me speaking the truth because that's what it is. It's the God honest truth. There's nobody that can touch Charlotte Flair in the ring, man. One legend that I think you put out there against Charlotte Flair when she comes back. She's taken on Trish Stratus. She beat Trish. She took on Ronda Rousey. She's beaten Ronda. She took on Naomi, which I think they, they could have had something going on there if they would have kept on going with their, with their storyline. Charlotte Flair and Jay Cargill, whenever they toss hats, is going to be great. Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair, whenever they decide to go with that program, you're going to see a phenomenal match. This match does not have to have no titles on the line. This is just two girls getting it on in the ring. I'm telling you, in AEW, there's nobody that can touch Charlotte Flair. Tony Storm right now is a great AEW women's champion. But she could not, when she got in the ring with Charlotte Flair, I think they wrestled, she couldn't touch Charlotte Flair. Thunder Rosa could, type, could go in the ring against Charlotte Flair as well as Britt Baker if they were to ever, you know, wrestle in the same company. Those are like fantasy matches that people could create on the game or whatever. But in WWE realm, there's nobody that could touch Charlotte Flair, man. It's just that plain and simple. They, she is just too good right now. And she just, there's nobody that can touch her. Natalia is one of the greatest pure wrestlers in the business. Natalia can't touch her. I can name some girls. Rhea Ripley had to, had to take another chance to beat Charlotte Flair. Because Charlotte Flair had already beaten her for the NXT women's title. I mean, and, and, and I'm saying this because EO Sky beat Charlotte Flair at NXT. But... Yes, yeah, she loses, but she's solid gold in the ring when she's healthy and when she's on it. I'm telling you guys, Charlotte Flair is what it is, just like her dad. Diamonds are forever, and so is Ric Flair. And you guys got to understand, man, that's exactly what I'm talking about with this Royal Rumble. The opportunity is there. Who's going to step up and take it? Who's going to step up and take it? That's the biggest question for tonight. Will there be a two-time Raw Rumble winner? Or will there be a youngster that comes out the woodworks and win this thing? On the women's side, who's going to win? Does Bailey get her first Raw Rumble win? Does Nia Jax get her first Raw Rumble win? Does, Be does Becky go for two? We'll have to see. Comes on tonight. And with that being said, I am Mike D, DDE8013, Wonder of the World, Mike DZ. You guys enjoy the NBA. Enjoy college basketball. Enjoy the Royal Rumble. Enjoy. I'm going to enjoy AEW Collision Live. Tomorrow I will be back with... Oh, before I leave, let me let me make let me make my picks right quick on the football tomorrow. Chiefs versus Ravens, Lions and 49ers. Let me say this. Tonight, I mean tomorrow, excuse me. I think the Chiefs lose. I'm not betting against Mahomes, but I think Lamar's on a mission. If they could keep Mahomes off the field, they got a chance of winning. Shout out to my boy Rock B. Because Rock B told me that he's going for the Baltimore Ravens. 
He says the 49ers have a chance. They do. Can the Lions stop that three-head monster of Kittles, Samuel, and CMC? Those three guys right there are going to be very important tomorrow, as well as the others. Can the Lions, can the 49ers stop the Lions uh, guys? Jared Goff, he's ready. He knows he's been here before. He's been in the, AFC, in the NFC Championship game before. He knows the feeling. Brock Purdy has not been in. I think he was in there last year when they lost to the Eagles. Yes, he has. But I'm here to tell you, with the Lions, Montgomery, St. Brown, and that cast that they have in Detroit, the 49ers are going to have to play like they've already won the Super Bowl because I'm telling you guys this. The Detroit Lions are not going to lay down. They may lose, but they're going to fight just like Green Bay did. So the 49ers are going to have to come with it. If they want to go back to the Super Bowl, they got to come with it. The same way with the Kansas City Chiefs, even if they do, you know, they've got to keep Lamar Jackson off the field. They've got to keep Gus from running and taking the ball. They've got to stop, stop Zay Flowers. They got to, he's not even being too much of an option, but you still got to watch out for Odell Beckham. Mark Andrews. These guys can play, man. You got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta look at the sheet and see who's all out there. But I'm here to tell you, I think it's going to be Baltimore Ravens versus 49ers in the Super Bowl. And that's just me talking. That's just me saying it because it is what I think it is, folks. I think it's going to be the matchup between Lamar Jackson and Brock Purdy playing for it all. That's my Super Bowl picks right now. Uh, I'll get more into that tomorrow um, as, you know, Sunday comes along as well. Also tonight, the Lakers and the Warriors, they got the Warriors losing, winning the game by, by four points. I'm hoping that the Lakers can still beat the Warriors. The Warriors are right now on a, down, on a downward spiral, but tonight, LeBron and AD needs to make a statement against these Warriors and let them know that we're not scared of you. There's nobody scared of the Warriors anymore. People go into Oracle now and just beat the Warriors. You know why? And, I, and I'm, I'm going to end this when I say this. They're, they've gotten older. They're not as crisp as they once were. They don't win on the road. They win at home. And that's not, if you're going to be a, a team, you're not even in the playoffs right now. You've got four games to make up, you know, because of the injury. I mean, because of the sudden death of your coach, which is sad. And my condolences goes out to the organization of the Warriors for that. But with that being said, they have not been crisp this year. Draymond Green has not been helping these guys. And that's another reason why they're, they need to make some moves. Chris Paul has, has been a non-factor for them since he's been there. He's hurt again. So, you know, the Lakers need to jump on that. They, it, and if they can stop those young guys, because Clemingo and Moody and all those boys, they're going to come out there and play. But it's up to them to put a stop to it which we start rival week as well as the Heat and the Knicks are playing as well. The Wizards and the Pistons play. So they, they've got some great games uh, still coming on tonight. The Raptors and the, and the Clippers are also playing, I think. Uh, we'll see what happens with that forehead monster as they go up against the Raptors. Great games tonight as well as NBA, as well as wrestling, as well as uh, AEW, as well as college basketball. LSU and Alabama play tonight. Looks like LSU's probably going to lose that game, but we'll see. We'll see. But until then, God bless you. God keep you. Have a great Saturday. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.